Hello and welcome to the interview here on France 24. Our guest today is Carl Kim Horn. He is Cambodia's minister delegate attached to the Prime Minister Hun Sen. And he joins us from the sidelines of the World Economic Forum in Davos. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you. Your Prime Minister traveled uh, to Washington. Uh, you were on this visit. He uh, met with uh, the President Biden, who hosted a summit of the Association of Southeast Asian Countries, known as ASEAN. Uh, is full reconciliation between Cambodia and the United States on the horizon? I believe it is, because uh, in the past 72 years, uh, our relationship with the United States has been the highest right now, uh, given the current uh, level of cooperation and the many areas of cooperation that we have. Yes, I think it is. Uh, obviously, uh, there are a, a lot of uh, issues uh, still to be solved, uh, and there is tension, obviously, uh, because of the United States' perception of China's influence in uh, your country. Uh, there's been especially a controversy about allegations that China was building a military base on Cambodian uh, soil at the Ram Naval Base especially. Uh, you've denied this. Have you clarified? everything with the Biden administration on this front? Yes. On this uh, allegation, uh, the Royal Government Cambodia, particularly our Prime Minister, had clarified many times on this issue. But during his visit to Washington, uh, D.C. recently, uh, he made two important clarifications to the U.S. side. One was during the uh, meeting with the U.S. Uh, congressional leaders at the Capitol Hill. And also during the special uh, U.S. ASEAN summit, uh, our Prime Minister, Prime Minister Zan, and made clear that uh, we do not have any foreign military base in Cambodia, including China. And uh, our constitution fully uh, prohibits uh, the station of any uh, military foreign, uh, foreign military uh, power on, on our soil. So it's very clear, and he said this is a, an unnecessary concern or worry that need to be put aside, put away. Right. Uh, and so there's no talk of even leasing a base for 30 years, as has been reported, uh, to China. Again, like I say, it absolutely, I mean, absolutely that we do not lease any uh, land, property to any foreign country. And uh, for the military, for the military base, uh, there's no foreign base for the soil period. Right. Uh, the U.S. has sanctioned two senior military uh, officials from Cambodia for their alleged role in developing this military base. Have you asked the administration and uh, Congress uh, to essentially uh, go back on this decision? Well, of course, the uh, U.S. Uh, has made this decision. And of course, U.S. is a country that has imposed some more sanctions on many countries. Uh, so on this, I think uh, we don't discuss. We just uh, clarify the position that we don't have any foreign, uh, foreign military soldiers or foreign military on our on our soil. Period, and we don't have to uh, uh, discuss on on that issue. That's uh, on your side. Right. Are, are you concerned more broadly uh, about uh, possible uh, dependency on China on the economy? China holds uh, a lot of your foreign debt. We saw a country recently, Sri Lanka, uh, go through an economic collapse uh, and all people said that they owed too much uh, to China. Is this a concern for Cambodia as well? Well, sir, not at all. Cambodia is a country uh, we have a, a very uh, wise leader who, uh, of course, we welcome investment from all countries. We uh, diversify, you know, our trade and investment. We don't borrow this only from China. We bought from World Bank. Uh, we bought from uh, Japan and other countries. We don't rely on a single country for our uh, concession loans. And of course, we work closely with uh, international financial institutions and I'm World Bank. We are very confident, very secure. We have no concern on this issue at all.
Right. Are you concerned about, uh, as many countries are, about the impact? Well, we've had the pandemic, of course, but also the consequences of the war in Ukraine about inflation and about potential uh, social and even political unrest. Well, uh, we are concerned, of course, uh, with the Ukraine-Russia conflict. Uh, Cambodia is a country that uh, made decision based on this principle. Uh, that's why Cambodia uh, joined uh, other members of the United Nations to co-sponsor two resolutions that have been put up by the UN General Assembly, uh, not only just voted, we, we co-sponsor. And that decision we made, but also I want to say that we are concerned because of the rising cost of uh, energy uh, and of course also food. But Cambodia is one of the uh, uh, half of countries of ASEAN that we produce food. Uh, food security, uh, we, are quite, uh, we, we have surplus of rice right now. And uh, we, we're not so much concerned about food security. Of course, we're concerned with energy security, but we have an impact on other sectors of the economy. Right. Uh, the Biden administration, uh, President Biden was just in Asia and South Korea and Japan. He uh, is promoting a so-called Indo-Pacific Economic Framework uh, that a uh, dozen countries uh, have joined. China is accusing the U.S. of using this as a weapon, if I may use the word, against it. Uh, is Cambodia ready to join this U.S. initiative or is this totally out of the question for you? Well, look. You know, Cambodia is a member of ASEAN, the Association of Southeast Asian Nations. Uh, in 2021, for this year, we are chair of ASEAN. We fully support all ASEAN-led mechanisms. And we have many already. We have the, all the what called FTA, uh, the ASEAN Free Trade Area internally, which has uh, had uh, the Regional Conference Economic Partnership, or OSEP that went to effect uh, early January this year. And we have uh, FDAs between, between ASEAN and China, between ASEAN and Japan, between ASEAN and Korea, between ASEAN and India, and so forth. So we have a number of arrangements that we're working on. Of course, the U.S. has launched the Indo-Pacific Economic Framework, but uh, the United States does not, has not invited ASEAN to join, only invited uh, some uh, number of countries in this part of the world to join. But are you uh, planning to join individually, or do you refuse that? No, because I mean the, the invitation has not extended to us. Uh, if without invitation, how can we refuse? Uh, I think we have to study uh, about the details of this framework. Uh, but of course, uh, at the moment, we see that this is a, a process that has kicked off already, and we understand that some countries have been invited to join at this moment. Right. Uh, you mentioned uh, the fact that your country holds the rotating uh, presidency of ASEAN. Uh, the Prime Minister Hun Sen uh, visited Myanmar uh, early this year. Uh, I understand he also had a virtual meeting with the head of the junta uh, just a few days ago, uh, and that uh, he was asked uh, to try to call everyone to sign a ceasefire. I mean, how concerned is your Prime Minister about the continuing fighting in Myanmar? Well, you see, uh, our Prime Minister top priority after the relationship to go to Myanmar to meet regularly with Myanmar leader on the ground. His goal was to stop violence on the ground immediately, uh, to ensure that we have internal assistance uh, delivered to the needy people of Myanmar, but also to have the uh, dialogue, inclusive dialogue, uh, take place as soon as possible. This part of the five point consensus that as a leader have reached uh, in April last year. And I think uh, subsequently he had two uh, virtual meetings. Uh, one was back uh, on January 26, and of course, uh, the last one was on May 3rd. Uh, his top priority uh, of our Prime Minister is as, as, as in chair this year is to assist Myanmar, which is a fellow member of ASEAN. We want to uh, support uh, particular Myanmar, particularly the Myanmar people, because they now, what we're going through right now, is a, it's a great challenge, a very difficult uh, process right now. And that's why what we want to see is that ceasefire should be a permanent and all parties 
uh, on the ground should respect ceasefire and violence must be ended. And the uh, delivery of human assistance has to be moved ahead. And of course, the construct uh, dialogue of all the parties should be uh, taking place as early as possible. That's why our Prime Minister sent our special envoy as in chair to Myanmar uh, recently and of course to meet with uh, many people possible, but different stakeholders. My Prime Minister already on May 3rd or on uh, General Moon Liang to allow the special envoy as in chair to meet uh, Madame Aung San Suu and other uh, important stakeholders in Myanmar. Right. The problem is that there's no ceasefire and there's no progress right now. It seems that uh, the war is raging on and that uh, these initiatives from your prime minister are not being listened to. Well, I think we should give uh, uh, us a chance. We just now in our five months, I mean, not in five months yet. We are in our chairmanship. This is not even a half of, uh, of the way yet. Uh, we make all the uh, efforts already, the direct visit, virtual meeting, send a special envoy, I think soon we're going to send another special envoy. We just had another meeting in Penobie recently to uh, coordinate assistance from the different donors and supporters in order to support uh, Myanmar, including the, the delivery of the uh, COVID-19 vaccine also. So I think, no, I think it's, uh, it's too early at, at, at this stage. We want to remain to start with engage with Myanmar. I think we uh, we, we, we need to uh, give dialogue and diplomacy a chance. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Minister, uh, for appearing here on the Friends 24 interview on the sidelines of the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland. And thank you for watching it.